Welcome everyone to my live stream here on Twitch and Lee Chess. I'm International Master William Pascal. I'm from the United States, but I live in Budapest, streaming for the, from there. Um, been here since 2000, 2004, if I can remember correctly. So it's Central European time, 10 a.m. here. We're streaming till 12.30, Monday to Friday, here on Lee Chess and Twitch. I also do a simul every week on Sundays, when possible at 6.30 p.m. or 1800 hours and 30 minutes <laughs> if you like military time like our good friend Mr. Saddest Troll who might be by I'm not sure so it's time to start guys we are playing Blitz and Classical Chess here 5 to 8 minutes with a small increment Constant Change was challenging me to 10 minutes but he corrected his challenge after all those games we've played I think you should remember the time control Although I'm getting a little bit like a few screws loose, I, I really have trouble remembering stuff lately. I think it's time for a dietary adjustment or some more vegetables or I don't know, man, but I need to start taking some kind of memory supplements. Ginkgo biloba. Especially, I, I'm making a real push to to improve my game. Um, maybe Grandmaster's not out of the rel realm of possibility if I really, really fully concentrate on chess over the next um, five to seven years. I think I can do it. I'll be one of the oldest grandmasters ever to achieve the title. <laughs> Maybe not, but one of the. Anyway, let's give it a shot here, guys. Um, playing some Blitz Classical Chess, Hunt the King, Constant Change, HGGG. First up is Hunt the King. We are white. Regular stream today, we are playing our normal openings. Hunt the King. Let's play E4. I want to be able to... Um, you know, looking at this as, as preparation for my own, not only to help you guys, but it's also helping me to prepare for my own games. Um, I want to be, like, able to um, basically surprise people. They can't necessarily expect what I'm going to play. So that means having uh, multiple openings with white, multiple openings against e4, multiple openings against d4 to at least make it difficult for people to prepare. Here, in fact, I should branch out a little bit. I mean, if if I only play the Roy Lopez with white against e4, e5, that's probably a limitation. But there's only so much time to learn the openings. Um, okay, b5. This is, I guess they call it the Norwegian variation. Ingvar Johannesson, who I met when I was in Oslo in 2006, was a journeyman international master who represented Norway in a lot of Olympiads long before Magnus Carlsen came along. Um, was playing this variation for years and years. I think he, he might have even had a game against Fischer, and I'm not sure. <clears throat> but now Hunter King plays Knight F6. So in that position, I mean, it seems as though black should do something like consistent with this play on the queen side. Knight a5 is, is the most interesting line. Other moves may transpose. Two things like the uh, archangels. Now knight f6 poses an interesting question. Did I have this position the other day by a different move order? And I was talking about playing bishop b5. Wasn't that it? I was talking about playing bishop b5 in this position. Doesn't seem right. Knight g5 is interesting. I'm not sure what um, what the deal is with that. Online wiki, thank you for hosting, man. Gladys Troll, I knew you'd be along. I was um, I was just talking about how you hate military time. Um, I like <laughs> I like uh, I like to announce my simul time in 24 hour time. Um, anyway, castles, and what is this move order? Black has not played bishop e7 yet. I mean, normally this piece does get developed right away. So, okay, we, we will transpose to, um, we will transpose to the archangel. Archangelsk. I should say archangelsk. I think it's some English books. It's been translated to Archangel. Home of Al 
Alexander Ivanov, should I say birthplace of my my arch nemesis in New England chess in the 90s and early 2000s. Probably the guy who's beat me more than anyone. Maybe not though. There was a chess, there was a FIDE master at the Boylston Chess Club in Boston, Jakob Rasin from Leningrad, who probably beat me more than anybody. He, he probably beat me like 10 times. Ivanov probably has like eight wins. <clears throat> But um, those are the players who I played the most when I was improving. C3 and Hunt the King. This is pretty topical opening, actually. A lot of top players, like Naka especially. Another American GM, young American GM, relatively young American GM. Josh Friedel was playing this for a long time. A favored defense, I think, with, uh, with aggressive players. But I'm sure like a whole host of the top players in the world have played this for black. After, off the top of my head, I mean, I think Anand probably played it. But I can't remember exactly who. Um, but I think it would be good for me and, and then anybody to branch out and play um, something else. I don't really like the scotch. So I guess I have to learn to play the Joko pianissimo setups based on bishop c4 that would be the logical thing to do something altern alternative to, to just playing the Spanish of course I don't play e4 that often so it's, it's kind of a surprise for my opponent already when I do just that what's up guys I don't see anything in the chat. I think I erased the early chat, but um, Friday, it's poker night, which is always like a nice escape. You know, it's it was really brutal last week. Um, you know, I play chess all week, and I go to play poker, kind of escape from the chess for a night. And I have a friend there, another IM, who plays sometimes in my home game. And immediately, like, I get there, and I just want to let... I've been doing chess all day, and... He like wants to analyze. I'm like, dude, just let me, let me alone with the chess for a minute, you know. Um, so d5. You get the feeling this is some kind of over the top move that's probably not good for black. Simple refutation would be take. Take take d4, but there may be some weird lines, right? Is it like pawn takes pawn e4? Is this some crazy variation? Or does it just look like similar? Does it just look like it or is this really Memorex? Here, I know there is one line that goes something like this. Pawn takes c6, pawn takes f3. But I doubt that's the right position. Is it possible? Sleepy Mario, what's up? Is that a line? I guess we'll know after the game, but... I think Black's pretty close to... Pretty close to Blotto here. Um, maybe not. The bishop on c5. Can that be right to allow d4? I have several candidate moves. Knight takes e5, rook e1. But this move is like multi-purpose, establishing a strong pawn in the center, hitting his bishop with tempo, opening the e-file, um, opening up my bishop on c1. After doing chess all week, you know, like you just want a day off. That's why I don't do anything on Saturdays here. I need, I need a day off from chess. I love chess, but you have to like recharge your batteries. Um, Anything that you do, I think you need a break from it sometimes. If you do find yourself not performing well, um, whether it's over the board or or blitz, I think it can be a really good idea to take some time off and uh, and reapproach it a little bit later. Here, I noticed that with some of my students, um, like they'll not play for a week and then they come back and they're playing much much better. You like hungrier, it's more interesting. It's not like routine. 
Um, first round in some candidates or so. What? There was a famous Topalov game where he had great prep but lost the game against Fiddler who had white. First round in some candidates. It might be this variation with D takes C4, or E takes F3. Yeah, I mean, that that's I, I know that. That's weird. Yeah, that looks like the right kind of position. Might be the exact position. I can't imagine what other what other position it could be, right? You know, it couldn't be delayed another move. C3, like if I castle, if black castles, I'm playing D4. So if he wants to play D5, yeah, I had the feeling I've seen it. Some kind of weird, crazy gambit. This just looks like a tempo loss to me for black, you know? Whatever happens here, he's, he's gonna have to lose a tempo with his bishop. Now, there could be better moves though. Um, in the open variation and, and in some other lines, there's this like so-called Riga variation, which I remember, <clears throat> I mean, Knight G5 is a spicy move that could, uh, could be interesting. Although Knight G5 castles kingside. Knight g5 castles kingside queen h5 right that looks pretty that looks pretty tasty he has bishop f5 there knight g5 castles kingside queen h5 bishop f5 seems to do the trick so there's always a check on e1 I guess we have some kind of, um, no, we don't have anything, actually. I was going to say some fancy sacrifices. There's nothing here. There's knight takes h7, but, I mean, that looks kind of stupid. Like, knight g5, castles, knight takes h7. Well, not absurdly stupid. We're down a pawn to begin with, right? Let's just play normal chess. I'll I'll sort of content myself with a small advantage. There may be a way to blow black away there, but I'm not convinced. I like um, I like my development. I like my powerful pawn in the center. His king side isn't that well protected, and. Uh, his C pawn looks kind of backwards, but still black's position seems playable. It looks like a good Petrov for white <clears throat> to me, even after like something simple like knight C3, take, take. It seems like white has a, a solid, solid Petrov, but nothing special. Um, knight, now bishop G4 is, is something to keep in mind where we might want to play h3 at some point. Also, this knight is hanging, which is huge in a lot of variations. I guess h3 is just like a standard positional move here. But black has a playable game. I feel like I should have I should have had something. Maybe knight g5 was it. Um, something sharper could have been played by moi. But I didn't see knight, knight h7, knight g5 castles, knight takes h7. Had the feeling of a move that like could lose the initiative or something like that. I looked at rook e8, queen h5, rook e5. That doesn't make sense. It's not possible. Yeah. Rook e8, queen h5. In that variation with knight takes h7, rook e8, queen h5, rook e5. Then I could still play knight g5. I guess that's the key. Hunt the king. Don't lose on time, man. It looks like you got out of the opening alive. Knight takes f7. Well, his rook is protecting f7. Sleepy Mario. I mean, I might be able to do it anyway. But I wasn't convinced by that. He's still not castled. 
bringing my bishop to the diagonal of death. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It looks... You're messing around too much on the queen side, Hunt the King, when you should probably be castling. But who am I to say it's it's definitely bad? B3, of course. The problem with B3, it drives his knight closer to the center. I think I should just ignore that. Yeah, this is Petrov, <clears throat> Queen D3, A3. Is Queen D3 even worth it? Probably not. Maybe just knight c3 or something like that. The long diagonal looks good for black. It's got a strong knight on c4. This is not so easy. Mm, don't see anything special. a4, knight d2. b3 simply. I don't like b3. Creates a lot of weaknesses in my position. Um, just gonna make a waiting move. This will keep him off of b4. But Black's got out of this really, really conveniently. Um, seems like his position is almost fully okay. I missed that move. I thought he was forced to play g6. Although it may be a better move ultimately. Jeez, I'm gonna hang that pawn. I don't know. I'm not really sure I have any advantage here. Structurally, I'm worse. Not, not. Just too hesitant at some point. I've got to play this ridiculous move. It's ugly. B3. The ugly B3. Now... Feels like a cheapo. Bad structure for me. But he does have some weaknesses. Now knight f5 becomes an outpost. A3 pawn. We've got to keep an eye on that. I don't have any threats here. That move is bizarre. King g7. Looks a little dangerous to play king g7. Okay, well, we're gonna go home, I guess. This pawn on a3, I was a little bit worried about anyway. And I don't really want to trade pieces in this isolated queen pawn position. King g7, h6. That's um, kind of dangerous. He just resigned. I don't know that it's necessary to resign right away. But it wasn't a good idea to play h6 and king g7. But I think that your position was fine. Let me see this. Don't normally take time to analyze the game, but I'm really, really curious about this opening if I'm if I'm right about d5 and... No, apparently d5 is... must be... Okay, there are a couple games, yeah. There's just a couple games with d5. It looks insane. Alexander Onishuk played that? 
None of these games are recent. You know, I think I'm confusing this with a slightly different position. E takes d5. It's a slightly different position. Maybe where like weight isn't castled yet somehow, but I, I don't understand how that's possible. Um, so d5 is too risky. And then what am I supposed to do here? Knight takes e5 was played by Barescu, uh, whoever that is. d4 looks best. Knight takes e5 is interesting. d4 looks principled. The question is here, knight g5 or, or some other move. I thought this is really interesting and um, similar to the Riga variation. Yeah, that's the best line. Castles, knight takes h7. So I was, I was on the right track here. I saw rook e8. Oh, he should just take according to the computer. Okay. This is not that clear. Yeah, it's not even that much of an advantage, if at all, for white. <laughs> Interesting line there, Hunt the King. Um, further exploration will be re required. Um... That, that d5 move, why is that so familiar? Some some sort of slightly almost identical position, but with some tiny difference. Okay, against constant change, I'm also going to play e4. He, um, he's been driving me crazy with this closed old Indian when I play d4. So that's such a difficult struggle. Um, not what, not the kind of position I like to play in this time control, to be honest. Um, closed King's Indian, Old Indian type positions are, you know, like 60, 60 move positional squeezes. Like, that's not my preferred kind of position for the 8-3 time control. Um, interesting line. Constant change. We'll give him like 45 seconds to a minute, and then if he doesn't, if he doesn't show up, we'll, we'll hold him as a reserve for next round. So everybody, I'm really, um, I'm really psyched. I'm getting back into playing a bit. I've got the Budapest Team Championship and the Hungarian Team Championship every week for the next five weeks, um, and then in April, I'm slated to play in the first Saturday Grandmaster Tournament here in Budapest, which is the first time I've played since like 2011, I think. It will be the first closed GM tournament I've played since 2011. That's insane. I don't know where like the last six years I, I spent playing poker, but still, I mean, I can't believe that six, it's been that long, like six years. And the first, it will be the anniversary of the first time I played in Budapest, which was in 1997. All right, constant change. I'm going to abort this game for now, and you can challenge me, or I will challenge you when I get back, and when I see a new challenge. In the meantime, HGGGG. So hopefully you guys will help me prepare for the uh, those tournaments. I'm also thinking about um, I'm thinking about May and June. There's a couple tournaments here in um, Balaton. Lake Balaton, Yano Shrigo organizes a tournament in, in I think in in June, and there's a very good tournament that's been moved to May, the Zalakarish Open. So the Zalakarish tournament was fantastic last year, extremely, extremely strong. Um, H G G G. I hate the Queen's Gambit accepted. I don't really have a great, I don't really have a great system against the Queen's Gambit accepted. It's a problem. Um, what to do? Um, need to work on this. Let's make a note to self. Is Sicilian Dragon a valid opening? I would think so. I, I only... I think I've only played like the proper dragon maybe once in my life. Um, 
I played the Accelerated Dragon, which is a little bit easier because it's not really involving long castling opposite sides. Um, Bishop e6. But it requires massive, massive preparation. Okay, Bishop e6, this is a, a sideline. Zoltan Varga, one of my teammates, he likes to play... Um, he likes to play setups like this. Yeah, this is Vargas specialty. And now like knight g5, bishop d5, e4, h6, pawn takes d5, pawn takes g5, etc, etc. Um, is one of the main lines. Long time I looked at this, a long time ago I looked at this a little bit. It's not really clear what white should play on the previous move. There's all sorts of variations. Knight d2, um, knight c3, queen c2, knight e5. Anyway, here we are. Knight g5, bishop d5, e4, h6, pawn takes d5, pawn takes g5. I guess we'll play that because I don't really know what else to do. Am I nervous? No. Um, you know, nothing will ever compare to like the first time I went to a chess tournament when I was a kid. Um, I guess I was like my first like real rated chess tournament I was probably like 11 years old and that was like the feeling of like you know going to your first tournament how nervous you are but I was nervous actually last year um, for the team games not really but playing Zalakarosh which was my first open tournament in like seven years or maybe more actually um, I played in the World Open in 2006 that's 11 years ago. I played some small opens, but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird playing in a big tournament. I was a little nervous come to think of it. This is an unusual plan, queen d7. Not sure my reaction is the best. <sighs> We're down a pawn as you can see, but black has had to go to some measures, you know, some artificial measures here giving up his bishop, um, developing the queen on a strange square. Seems like it should afford me some compensation. I just, I'm a little bit unsure if I have enough. I'm just going to develop. I'm not going to try to grab the pawn yet. Tough call. I mean, I could play b3, maybe. But it's not that convincing. B3, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. I thought we'll develop first. The white squared bishop could come to F3 in some lines if he tries anything with like B5. There it is. So bishop F3 is a useful idea around here somewhere. Um, timing, though, is is of the essence. I don't have to do anything right away. I don't think he wants to play b4 and let my knight in a4 and weaken his structure. The question is how much compensation do we really have here? g6 looks like a standard plan. We could do knight takes b5, c takes b5, bishop f3, knight d5, or knight e4. You could play bishop f3 first. But I'm not sure what it does. So a4. I mean, a4 looks pretty good, actually. And, and now he pushes, but now his pawn becomes fairly weak. With knight a2, my knight gets really sidelined. For all I know, this is some kind of theory. 
Um, but it looks like the sea pawn should fall. Knight d2 or just queen c2. HGG with five minutes. The nice thing about a variation like this for black is that you do <laughs> you do catch your opponent off guard. Under 850 section. You totally nervous in my first tournament game. Played like garbage as a kid. My first tournament game was a success. I, I was like unrated and I I think I played I think my opponent was like pretty high rated, like 1700 and I drew. That was one of the highlights of the tournament though. I think I ended up, I think I ended up like with like two draws and four losses. Um, but still, I mean, it was a good result. The guy, it was an under 1800 section and the guy was rated like in the top 10 or something and I was really intimidated, but I managed to it was like up a pawn and drew or something. All right, so now we have to deal with these central breaks. Oh, the good old C5, C5 and B5. I mean, C5, C5 and E5 to be specific. I'm just going to flag, so let's try not to flag. God, I hate the Queen's Gambit accepted. We need a real system. I used to play A4, but I don't like that line. It's just create this huge weakness in your position. Um, what's up here? Slight threat. But HGG, HGG, HGG is playing kind of quickly, but not necessarily the best moves. Looks like we're usurping the advantage. I think now I can stop c5 with bishop e3, which is probably my primary goal in this position. If he gets in c5, he kind of frees his position to a serious degree. What's up, guys? You should move faster, said... Yeah, you can see what moving fast did for my opponent. That's, um... <laughs> you should move faster. You can't take it to the grave with you, my friend. Use your time. I'm quite, you know, I'm quite competent. I mean, it's five second increments. That's a lot. We're getting five seconds back per move. That's huge. I mean, I can play the whole game with, with no time and five seconds per move. If it was three seconds, I'd be a little more concerned. And less than three seconds, one or two seconds increment is, is very, very small. Just enough to like, not get checkmated in a, you know, simple situation. But the um, the five second increments is like a luxury. Yeah, I should move. Okay. I think queen c7 was a good move under the circumstances. There, I thought knight g4 was a golden opportunity for hggg which he did not prize himself of. And now it looks bad for black. Without that move, I think he's basically strategically toast here. Though I don't have a lot of time to find like finesse moves.
It's going to be harder for him to find moves than it is for me to find moves. The one problem is this pawn on e4. It's extremely annoying to keep that protected. I can't maneuver my queen to a good square. I think we can probably resolve it through other means. But see, he's having to use all his time now because he's realizing that he has like nowhere to go. Um, increasingly difficult to find good moves. Now there's a nasty pin on the knight. But in general, you're probably right. I should move a little bit faster. But this particular opening, um, this particular opening, was was problematic for me. I don't know the, uh, I don't know the variation too well. So I had to kind of figure it, figure it out on my own. He's managed to kind of managed to solve most of his problems here. Whoa. Sometimes my mouse drifts off and I get my screensaver with lots of video games, family photos. Bishop d6, kind of a risky move um, in the circumstances, but I wanted to stop both breaks, uh, c5 and e5, knight f4. Okay. Knight f4, I prefer not to see knight f4. And I think I can afford a slight weakening around my king. So now who's in time pressure? It's much harder for him to find a move here. Looks like he's calculated his way out of this somehow. He managed to find a way out. What a move, c5. And there was a knight takes g3 lurking there, and he had this too, whoa. Oh my god. A clear pawn down now. No tactics. was a bad move. Oh man, I should have played queen d7. Probably wouldn't have helped though. Clear pawn down.
my last move even did anything. But it's all good. The pass pawn is blockaded, so he doesn't have any immediate wins. Extremely hard to get at him. Oh, it's the discovery on my king. Nice. What a game. What a game. We played well. Oh, a little bit lucky at the end there. <laughs> I think you had me. He had me, guys. King Wiki. We lost constant change. I guess he had somewhere to go. Man, nice uh, new haircut. You had to say it. Only a shave or also a haircut. Two bits, man. Um, yeah, we, we're looking good. We're styling. It's a little bit too short, but don't make fun. Knight of five check, I guess. No, no, no. My queen is protected. I'm sure you were winning somehow, but it wasn't easy. Um, okay, King Wiki's up 8-3. Nice, nice C5, though. I'm sure that I had something better than what I did, losing a pawn. Um, but whatever. It was kind of time pressure. Yeah, I don't leave myself much room for making mistakes there. Um, mixing up my openings. I played a bunch of e4. We had a d4, now knight f3 and c4. Although if black plays like the king's Indian or like constant change, the old Indian or the queen's gambit, when you play the English or flank openings, um, ultimately, I think the best bet is to, in most cases, transpose into the main lines with d4, but... But you can play the Ray T like this. King Wiki. Ray T opening. Not very aggressive for white, but you give your opponent lots of room to hang themselves with. That's that's the nice thing about hypermodern openings. I strongly recommend studying the games of Bent Larson. Um, there was a game by a game, a book by Peter Clark, I think. Um like Bent Larson, Master of Counterattack, I think. Highly recommended. Knight a3 here. When white will uh, oftentimes sacrifice structure and um, a pawn for. Uh... I almost lost to this old master, Jerry Hankin, once. I remember. He was like a chess writer for Chess Life, and this larger-than-life character, relatively weak master, but I remember once, like, I was black in this line, and I had to fight for my life not to lose. It would be very embarrassing to lose to Jerry. Not Chess Network Jerry, of course. An old master. Um, only American players would, would know who I'm talking about. Bishop takes a3. There is the possibility to play queen a4 check and take with the queen. But as far as I can recall, it's not regarded as, as good as this. Henkin played this against me. He got a massive position with white. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking playing this variation for black because this was 20 years ago or plus and I, I just sometimes played stuff randomly because I, I just was young and overconfident. Um, but not a variation you should take lightly with black because you don't have a dark squared bishop to guard the dark squares in the position. If the c-pawn falls, which it often does, 
white has something of like kind of central strong center center on d4 and e4 center in other words something like a strong center um was the result of the last one hg hung his queen and then resigned shortly thereafter so i'm sure there's a ton of theory on this position but I do not know it. Guys, I've been thinking about something new here. Dropped a contact lens. No, I'm just kidding. Bishop d7. That looks like, has the makings of a classic plan. Compact, solid, probably known. Looks like white is sort of forced to play knight e5 here. I'm thinking of one of the games from yesterday I saw. I was looking at games from Gibraltar, Gibraltar, and um, it must have been a Gibraltar game. There was another, there was a Catalan were already like this. Somebody, does anybody look at the games from the Gibraltar tournament? Catalan hypermodern type of flank opening is quite popular with a lot of top players at the moment. There was a good game from Gibraltar. Uh, Nakamura unable to make progress against Gopal. The guy like just sacrificed the whole exchange and then he was able to block the whole board. Or actually, Naka kind of helped him, but it was an interesting game. Just the total board, the dude just closed the whole board and Naka was up in exchange but couldn't make any progress. I didn't think a very good game from Nakamura. It looked to me like he was, it looked to me like he wasn't really playing his A game. And I think there's the danger with that, you know, with these guys getting paid appearance fees, like to play who are 2,800, a bunch of weaker players in an open tournament. Um, I think there's a tendency to let down and not play your best. And I, I think we see a lot of that. Certain players don't do that. Like Evenchuk is one of them. This guy just loves the game and he's going to play his A game no matter what kind of a specialist even in, in big opens. Michael Adams is another player who never lets up, would never like play his B game because it was like a sub, you know, sub level tournament or something. But the Naka is the kind of player who I would suspect might, he might take some people lightly in, in certain circumstances and, and not play his A game um, or certain events. I didn't like the way he played against Gopal. It looked like he was just kind of making random moves. Bishop to b5. Huh, you're just hanging b7. So there's the problem with this counterplay he has with queen d4, but one would suspect that I win material here. Perhaps not. Taking on b7, queen d4. Bishop takes a8, queen takes a1. If I take on b7, queen d4, rook b1, there is a possibility that my guy could get trapped on a8. That's the only thing that's bugging me about this. I mean, it's now or never. King Wiki, I mean, this is it possible this is some kind of variation? Bishop takes b7, queen d4, bishop takes a8, queen takes a1. That is sort of disturbing. Rook b1. I mean, this should be good for white. 
at the very least, I could play something like rook b1, a6, and get my pawn back. There's also a4, but I don't think that's as constructive. Had to close the stream. Oh, as I have a bad internet connection, we'll reconnect to Twitch after the game. Well, bishop takes b7, queen d4 is kind of making me crazy, dude. Um, but the point is, like, rook b1, queen takes e5, defends the bishop on b5. Um, he's also threatening, if I, if I do nothing, he can play knight c6, which sort of, I would imagine, would solve all of his problems. Rook b1... Rook b1c6 is possible too. That seems okay for white. Alright, I'm gonna settle for this. Maybe I missed something here. It's very possible. This is like not the best move. Bishop takes a8, queen d4, bishop takes b7, queen d4, bishop takes a8, queen takes a8, a1. Um, I don't see how that's good for me. It's just a mistake. The last game. But this looks like King Wiki just blundered. After all that, maybe his internet disconnection. Dude, it was such an interesting opening, and then you make this howler. I mean, after a6, the best I have, a6, bishop takes b7. Well, I guess I also have a4, a6, a okay, c6 I had decided was best, right. c6, and then queen c2. When I think black is okay, and you could even play queen d4 there if you want to be, want to be greedy. So king wiki, you find a fantastic resource and then you drop a piece. It's very anticlimactic. Maybe you invented a new defense in this line. You just lost now. You bought a new graphics card about a year ago. What are you talking about? Zen chess. Is that relevant? <clears throat> oh, you're talking about video games? Well, I think I need a new graphics card for this computer. I can't play any kind of like new video games. I bought the latest Plants vs. Zombies, but this machine can't handle it. Um, anyway, I'm not really a video game, you know, guru, but I do like to play video games. C3. Let's just keep the structure intact, shall we? Or maybe not. Ah, his knight can come to d5, kind of be annoying. We're up a piece. You need a new graphics card for sure. Um, don't know if he, he's probably talking about Zen Chess. Anyway, guys, I want to thank someone. We had a new donation for the stream and the YouTube channel from Thomas. I want to thank Thomas and everybody who's uh, made small donations to the stream and YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube, where I do upload all the streams from here. Also, I'm just going to trade pieces here. Um, also, I have a video coming out today on YouTube where I review some of the um, some of the 
video games, some of the Blitz games I've played during the week. The new concept for me is to analyze um, certain openings. So we're going to take some games and make a kind of thematic video of a few Blitz games from the week. That is the concept for this week. So thematic Blitz game review. Three or four games from the weekly Blitz where we um, focus on one particular opening. And I thought this would be kind of a cool idea. I've done simul reviews in the past. Um, I do all kinds of different ideas. Once a week, we do upload a new video, uh, independent material. So check it out. If you do, check out my YouTube channel, like and subscribe. Online Wiki, you're going down. So what else is new? You're talking about the stream quality, stream quality. Thank you, Surfar XX. The um, the stream quality looks fine. The um, the thing that you're probably referring to is the slowness of the camera, which um, which is because I've had a lot of drop frames, and I don't think it's due to my video card. Although I probably do need a new video card. Um, I have had problems with my disc, so at the moment I'm going to not take my chances. We, we can watch me in slow motion because the speed of my the speed of my camera is probably not really important. This is not uh, not like we're playing a shooter video game. Um, I just wanted to want it to work. So as long as we don't drop the stream, there is a delay of 15 seconds or so. And that's pretty normal. Um, King Wiki, you're welcome to resign anytime. Speaking of resigning, I was, um, <laughs> normally I don't say that, but he's a rook down, two rooks down. Um, I was watching the games from Gibraltar and <clears throat> there was this game, this woman from the United States, Anna Zatanska. I don't know, she's like 2440 Fide, so she doesn't play very much. Um, I um, I noticed she was playing Nigel Short, and like, she's not really a good match for Short. And she had a lost position after like 15 moves, but she played it out till she was four pawns down. And I thought, man, that's, that's kind of weird, you know? I mean, you're 2440 Fide, and okay, you're like embarrassed probably, like you, you made a blunder tactically on move 12 or something, and you've, you've got a lost position basically, strategically, like right out of the opening. But she played it on and on and on, like till she was really literally down four pawns. And uh, I mean, maybe if you had something personal against, um, against Nigel Short, which I guess some people might, um, but in general, like, I think that international master strength players um, you know if you're like down a piece or down a rook or down a knight or down three or four pawns I think that to show a little bit of respect for your opponent by resigning um, would be like kind of you'd be a good role model if you do something like that so I notice it a lot lately though like a lot of people even strong players in top tournaments don't seem to show um, this kind of respect to the others by resigning in a timely fashion which was you know in the past it was kind of customary I see I see it a lot even with the, the top young players oftentimes they don't resign like in totally lost positions and continue to play on it, it's it's kind of strange um, I think that like it's a kind of etiquette thing that's being forgotten um, if you show respect to the other players they'll show respect to you later you know what I mean? So so it's like, it goes both ways. It's a mutual respect kind of thing. Um, just just wanted to throw that out there. Because I saw some people debating it here on, on Lee Chess, like about various etiquette type of things. You don't offer draws to someone who's like a thousand rating points higher than you. I mean, basic things like, it's easy to forget these things in the in the era of, of, uh, of online chess. 
So Zen Chess is up. Did we ever get constant change back? No. Um, never resign. That's a great example of Yeah, I can't agree with that, sir. And um, now against the close Sicilian. Try something different. He played what? Bishop b5? Oh, this is interesting to do g6 right away. That's your bottom line. Uh, yeah, I guess in bullet chess, that's a good philosophy. But uh, otherwise, um, you play quite a bit of bullet chess. Yeah, I don't think that's really the right idea in, um, in over the board master play. When you become a master, you have to learn to show respect for the other players. Um, here, knight c6 will transpose to this variation with bishop b5, which I was thinking about trying to avoid that. Well, you know, there's an interesting way to do that, maybe b6 here. I think I played this against someone else recently. Great points to put out there. Well, no, p people forget about etiquette, you know. And a lot of people are very selfish, just don't resign. But think about it. I mean, if, if you resign against another player in a long tournament like that, you know, you show them respect, but you also save energy. You save energy for the other guy. Um, especially if it's like a multiple round a day kind of tournament. You're just foolish if you don't resign. Secondly, um, maybe that guy will resign next time against you. And you can save yourself some energy. Maybe go analyze the game instead of wasting your time and wasting the time of the other player. Just kind of a childish mentality um, not to resign. I can understand Anna Zatonska like getting a lost position in like 13 moves and, and not wanting to res resign out of like embarrassment, you know. So sure, you, you play it on for like another 10 or 15 moves, um, but not dragging it out to like you're down like four pawns. That seems like a bit over the top. So play it out to like 20 or 25 moves, just so it doesn't go down in the books as like a miniature would be, I would think that would be like kind of acceptable, but against a legend like Nigel Short, you're just not going to make any friends by doing that. Unless you happen to hate Nigel Short personally for some reason, which there are people who do. Um... I don't really know Nigel, but I always tell the story about how there was some friction between him and, and Amos Sotovsky once, and they were playing on the stage area of the Isle of Man masters, and Sotovsky was like dropping the captured pieces off the side of the table, like just a, as, a, like, <laughs> as a show of disrespect for short, which was kind of funny. I think he won the game too. If I'm not mistaken, Sotovsky won the game. But if someone does something bad to you, or you have like a concrete reason for um, for not having respect for that person, then I think it's a different story. Okay, so back to back to reality here. Trying to play something original. We transpose to some kind of Cham Sicilian. Ishvan Cham. One of the players, I think, would frequently play like e4, c5, knight f3, b6. A variation that's, uh, I think, part of the French Grandmaster Bauer's repertoire. And Bauer, who plays um, quite interesting openings, he also plays the, the Owen defense. So that makes sense, you know, e4, c5, and b6, or e4, b6 right away. But, you know, most people who play the closed Sicilian aren't interested in playing the white side of the open Sicilian.
But I don't know the theory here, so we're just going to make it up as we go along. Short had a beef with Greg Shahadi. Yeah, Short is one of those people that you e seem to either love him or hate him. Um, I'm one of the few that's like neutral because <laughs> I guess I lean toward not liking him from what I've heard, but I, I can't really concretely say I... I hate him or something. He seems kind of opinionated and obnoxious. Um, but he never did anything to me, so... That's just a very surface judgment. Bishop d3. Knight c6, or knight a6 is even interesting. But knight a6 might not work here. My bishop would be overloaded if I play knight a6, and then my other knight has nowhere to go. This looks kind of artificial for white. This piece is clumped together, like, in a small area there. Not really well coordinated. Maybe just d6. Beacon said, Short seems like an even bigger bastard than we are here at Beacons. I know that I know that he's very, very controversial. Um maybe we shouldn't have got into this. Well, as a chess player, he's certainly very important. I was sorry to see Karpov lose the infamous match where Short played the Budapest Gambit. I don't think Short really needed to play in the World Championship to to enlarge his ego anymore. <clears throat> he played a match with Lev Albert in like 1988. It was like a match between the US champion and, and the British champion. And he had some kind of little like plush piggy or something, which he kept at the board, but it was very strange. Um, for a grown man to have a kind of plush toy or some sort of small piggy. Another mean thing he did was like trolling the chess master in Harvard Square. That during that trip he like went to Harvard Square and pretended to be like a beginner and trolled the he trolled the chess master who played for money in Harvard Square <laughs> pretending he was just a total beginner. Um, someone probably put him up to that. DRS Pod said Nigel Short is the typical petulant Englishman. I can say that because I'm an Englishman. I, I think that honestly James Plaskett takes the cake there, but he's not as not as strong as not as strong as Nigel Short. Um, Queenie two. Once Plaskett came to the board against me with this like huge red scarf. He looked like I don't know Snoopy from the Red Baron and Snoopy. It was really it was. Like, so hideous, it was, like, comical. Um, and he thought he looks, like, you know, distinguished and cool, but just, like, he was a sort of meme of himself. Queenie 2. Are you going to castle Queenside? Is that the plan here? Well, I think maybe I should just wait. Play knight d7 first and make a decision later. <clears throat> it's a dragon. It's a dragon Owen. I was going to say a dragon dwarf, but I haven't played a6. So it's it's not a dragon or a dwarf. It's it's a dragon, um, dragon Owen. And Owen. Owen, Owen. Owen Dragon. Um, just a fluid setup for black, but I think white white has his chances here. Classically set up. Zenchess kind of like developing the way, I don't know, the best player in the world in 1900 probably would have. This is how like Steinitz or... Yeah, this is how Steinitz would have, would have played with white probably. Nothing wrong with that. Very like straightforward and classical um,
Once I lost when I was up a rook against Wang Thang Trang, but it was my own fault. Um, nobody's fault but mine. So here we have a chance to try to go for the e4 pawn with like knight to c5. But then there's a check on b5, though if he commits to that, he's definitely losing the e4 pawn. Um, alternative, alternative news, alternative variation would be like h5, g5, knight g4, bishop g1, but I don't see a follow-up there. Um, castling looks slightly dangerous. Certainly not fatal. If I do play knight c5, yeah, okay, let's play knight c5. Plus it gives my knight a fallback square on d7. Of course, the main justification is that e5 drops his rook on h1. I mean, if if that wasn't the case, I don't think I would venture this move. But this is this is pretty speculative. In the worst case scenario, maybe I could capture this guy on d3. I'm very quickly playing bishop f2. Well, I can always take his bishop, if nothing else, and uh, that would reduce his... Yeah, I think it reduces his potential here. Um, there's no rush, though. He did have the bishop check. Rook c8 looks pretty good. Let's get one more piece in the game. I'm sure this is a dumb question. What does IM stand for as someone who doesn't know the rating, ranking system? Yeah, it's, it's the title given by the International Chess Federation, of which I'm not exactly a proud member, but that's all we've got. So it's, it's kind of the only um, accredited international chess sport organization, other than like correspondence chess. Oh no. We go totally like. So we should go the full. Full, um. The full Maxime here. Did you guys see this game from Gibraltar, the last round? MVL, the full MVL just like was shredding somebody pretty badly. He sacked an exchange on C3. It looked pretty convincing. I'm not 100% sure, but MVL was in kill mode. Um, so no exchange sacrifice here. This knight's gonna get driven away anyway, so. Maxime Legrave. Just create an account here to ask you something, to ask me something. What book would you recommend to a beginner? Chess book, of course. Yeah, this is a really tough question. We get it a lot. Um, I mean, I think amongst modern books that the Silman, Jeremy Silman has written some decent books. I'm not really sure they're for like absolute beginners though. I think the Silman books are more for like advanced beginners and intermediate players. I'll try to answer the question when I get a little bit more time here. Okay, let's, 
Let's castle. I've got to open it up. The possibility of sacking an exchange on c3 is still in the air. Um, but I think the priority would be to open the center somehow for my bishops. Not so easy to do. Well, anyway. E5, knight, B5. Guess we should play A6 first. We're a little bit low on time, and Zenchess is notable for his speed. Can't really afford for the mouse to go off the screen when I have 26 seconds. Next thing you know, it'll be like freezing. Um, White has some attack on the king side, but I think I can defend my king side. If worse comes to worse, I could play rook e8 and knight f8. This was not expected. Maybe bishop f6 here. Thinking outside the box. He expected bishop h8, bishop h8, I'm sure. But it might be better for me to play bishop f6 first. Encourage g5. You know, now I can take on d4 if he plays g5. But I don't know, h6 is really counterintuitive. I'm just aiming for open diagonals for my bishops. Zen chess, you lost on time. That I'm surprised by. Looks like black's a little better, but you might have g5, bishop h8, some kind of counterplay. Looks better for black. I've got a lot of pressure in the central files here. So h6 was a kind of surprising decision from Zen chess, closing the h file. I think he was trying to do some kind of knight f5 sacrifice, but couldn't find time. Vinu. I don't play rated and I don't play 8-0. I require a time uh, increment. So if you'd like to change your challenge to something like unrated 8-3 or 7-3 or 5-3 or 5-5, please do so. Blue Crow is up next, 5-4. Not your best game. I don't think it was so bad. You just lost on time. Maybe you made a couple mistakes toward the end. Um, it looked like a reasonable position. Blue Crow. Guys, I want to thank those of you who have made donations to the stream last year and this year. Coming up February 1st will be a one-year anniversary of um, of streaming here on Leechess for me. So my first year will be complete, and I think it's been pretty successful. We've grown our viewership up to like almost 100 viewers per stream, um, over 100 in some cases. We um, are starting to create a little library of videos on the YouTube channel. And um, I'm improving and I hope you guys are improving too. I think you're gonna see my rating going up from all this daily work that we're doing. Um, okay, Plucro, I did win a really nice game, my last Hungarian team championship. I felt very confident, um, starting to feel like playing again because I didn't play the last six years very much. I'm starting to feel like I'm gaining my confidence back, and um, hopefully we'll see the, the results pay off. Um, knight to c3, knight c6. This is pretty much my main line in the black side of the Sicilian. Getting back to the question about uh, a book for beginners. 
Um, Logical Chess, Move by Move by Chernev is is a good book. Um, I think that's the title. The Most Instructive Chess Games Ever Played, I think is also Chernev. Very good for beginners. A lot of classic books uh, you can get like pretty cheaply from like Dover, which is a kind of like inexpensive uh, publishing house that, that publishes a lot of old chess books. Bishop g5 here. I've been playing mostly bishop d7, so let's mix it up in case, in case, <laughs> in case Blue Crow has prepared. Um, and my favorite book of all time is 500 Master Games of Chess, which is annotated by Savely Tartakover, who was a world-class player himself. Um, it's it's not really a beginner's book, but I think the games are eternal and, and valuable for players of all levels. Um, and you see the beauty in those games that Tartikover annotates. Uh, I think you really find it very inspiring at any level, whether you're an absolute beginner or a, or a master. Um, so the classic books I would recommend for the beginner. And you could go to like treatises like um, Nimzovich, for example, My System, or um, perhaps even Lasker's Manual of Chess. Does anyone know if Lasker's Manual of Chess exists in like an algebraic notation? That would be, I think, a really cool thing. I have an old copy in, in uh, descriptive notation, but that's really like ancient and I wouldn't recommend that to someone today just too hard to read the descriptive notation if you're not used to it so um, Lasker's Manual of Chess I think I really recommend the classics there, there may be some new books Jeremy Silman is someone I would trust I don't know I, I don't really um, I don't really like know a lot of the latest books for beginners Queen D2 um, thinking forever here. All right, we'll go back to my old standard. Do you know some controversial, unique chess books that go against the usual way of thinking? Well, of a modern variety, I, I don't really know. Um, in its time, Maybe in its time, my system by Nimzovich was considered controversial. He was revolutionary, but now it's considered to be kind of like chess science. Okay, knight b3. Now I have two variations I play, bishop e7 and a6. Bishop e7 transposes back into kind of main lines. This variation was sort of trendy 15, 10, 15 years ago. Once I beat Gufeld, in this line. I don't remember that game is lost to posterity too. I have to find that game. Actually, there was a guy who died last year, Frank Berry, who was a tournament organizer in Oklahoma, and he was a big friend of Edward Gufeld, and he wanted uh, he wanted my game against Gufeld, which was never published, where I beat Gufeld with black. Um, but the game is, is somewhere in my, in my archives. I need to find that though. Gufeld passed away. Frank Berry passed away last year. I should publish the game against Gufeld. Um, F3. This is main line, I guess. A6 or Rook D8. Rook D8, Bishop E3, Queen C7, Knight B5, Queen B8. Or Queen C7. right away we're a6 up and comer says I feel like my system is not totally accurate <laughs> okay seven chess deadly sins I like um, Rosen a lot too um, but those books are intermediate in content 
I wouldn't recommend them. I wouldn't recommend them to an absolute beginner. Um, according to Amazon, there is an Alaska's Manual of Chess new 21st century edition. That's probably a good place to start. Here I can sack a pawn with bishop takes f6. But I'm not sure if I have enough compensation or not. Probably do. Also, g takes f6 is fine. I don't really think f3 and... Um, that's f3 there. f3 and bishop takes f6 fit together very well. White's kind of weakening the dark squares. And then... The plan is to play g4 and h4, h5, h6. So you pull the bishop back to e3. This is not the first time I think that Plu Crow has traded his bishop on f6 prematurely. I don't think that white has justification for that. Just to be on the safe side, king h8 first preparing rook g8, rook g7, which is my standby. But here there's no real danger. I mean, f4 is the normal idea. is like f4 and, and like there's a mate on h7 or something like that. But he's going to have to waste the tempo at the very minimum to generate mating threats against my king. Um, although he has another legal move, it's probably not good. I do way too much playing and way too little tactics training. Um, up and comer says my system what I'd say it's it's best positionally for equal positions what, I'm not sure what he's exactly discussing there um, gotta watch for combinations but I mean rook takes d6 bishop takes f6 queen takes check rook g7 and white has nothing um, there's no real attack for white here and it looks like now I can have a free a free pass on the queen side attack you know it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty strong just it's gonna take me three or four moves to unravel and I have to complete my development. I could just play bishop d7. Um, that's probably the best idea first to get my to get my pieces connected, my rooks, and then initiate a queenside attack. Although we have all these possibilities, like queen f2, various play on the dark squares. Plucro should not part with his dark squared bishop under any circumstances in this kind of position after having played f3. Well, it's it's kind of standard procedure in structures where you play f4. It's a totally different thing. Play playing a lot is a slow way to improve. Yeah, I mean, I th you need to play and and study. It needs to be both. Like when I was starting out I had a friend it actually helps if you have a friend who's at a similar level with you ideally like a little bit better than you to kind of prod you along um, my greatest improvements came when I was working closely with a friend who was a little bit stronger than me and um, competing with a friend who's like ideally very competitive um, is uh, is what is what drove me to become stronger fairly quickly. Now I'm toying with all sorts of weird ideas here, but F5 5 is kind of hard to argue with. Cheapo or a good move? Or both. Both. Undoubling my pawns and winning a queen. Now here you would resign. But he is like almost winning on time. World loser 5-5. Five, five. 
Okay, thanks for cha challenging me to casual chess yesterday. World Loser challenged me to to rated and um, and I was afraid that he's some kind of computer player, but I don't think so. Um, I have had a lot of dubious accounts challenge me, and later on I felt like I was playing a computer, but World Loser seems legitimate. Um, yesterday he drew against me was uh, was a really good game until he blundered at the end, but I I was kind of short of time, so I agreed to a draw by repetition. So I had a I had a winning queen ending. Um, panicked a little bit. Been unable to beat World Loser. Two simul games and a blitz game now. Yeah, yesterday I played this trashy variation Queen F3 against Zen Chess, I think. But it's not good. Just something I throw out there occasionally for fun. Um, well, against World Loser, we'll play we'll play what I normally play, which is the Sozin attack. Constant change. When is my turn? Constant change. You're not even in the list, man. How can it be your turn? If you don't challenge me, it can't be your turn by default. Um... <laughs> this my turn. My turn is when you challenge me. Um, Constant change was here, like before the stream started, and challenged me, and um, then like didn't show up when I started the game, which isn't a problem, you know. I just started another game, but you know, normally you would come back and then re-challenge me, but I think he didn't realize or something that he like had to re-challenge me. Because of change, I'm happy to play you, but you do need to challenge me um, for me to know that you want to play. Are you going for for the GM title? Well, yeah, I mean, I think I still have enough left in me. Um, this is an interesting question, you know. I'm not ancient, so I could still technically get the GM title. I don't feel like I'm I'm ready for the senior championship. That will be my last chance. Um, I think I can do it, but it's going to take some luck, you know, since we're not going to be buying any games or like some people, um, it's going to take some luck and, uh, and as much as I can play, but I, I think we'll, we'll play it like little by little and see tough recapture here, whether to take with the A pawn or the C pawn. Um, World Loser, it's interesting, he doesn't use any time. None. He's 1800 fide. Here, Bishop e7 now. Looks like it's tempting to play g4. I'm going for a direct attack. But there's a question about my king being in the center. Where do I want to castle? We have the availability to castle both sides. <laughs> Buying games that happens. Like, is there any sport where corruption doesn't exist? Um, <laughs> if you can tell me a sport where there's no corruption, um, I'd be very surprised. Guys, we might have some trouble with the stream there. It looked it look like we lost some frames. I don't know if it's my disk or my internet connection or what, but sometimes it's a little bit, little bit iffy. It looks like it's good right now, but keep an eye. Remind me. Um, send me a chat if there's any kind of problem. Uh, Constant change said I have challenged. Constant change. Something's wrong because you're not in my list, dude. You are not in my list of challenges. Period. I'm going to castle kingside. That's the normal plan here in this particular setup. There we might have got a new challenge. And it's not constant change. Constant change, something is wrong on your end because we do not have a challenge from you. Um, are you sure you're playing under the same account? Are you logged in on the right account? Const there he is. Okay, finally. Um, this is probably book. 
though oftentimes black plays b5 earlier, he couldn't do it here because of the early exchange on b3. I'll win a pawn with knight takes b5. So this looks pretty standard. I guess f5, thematic pawn advance. Um, the stream is actually okay. Yeah, it's okay now, but it was a I did lose I did lose like one percent of the frames or something, so there was a little hiccup with the uh, with the connection, but it looks okay at the moment. Um, okay, now we have uh, very, very close to a game I had with Alexander Ivanov. Very, very close to a direct transposition where he lost on time against me in an equal position. Um, this is practically a direct transposition, like pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, queen h3. It looks like exactly my game with Ivanov. World loser is awfully strong. He's played the whole game in like one minute to my two and a half minutes, though I'm chattering about other stuff. Seems like a worthy opponent who's difficult to beat. Yesterday he played like a master, um, but blundered right at the end and uh, gave me one chance to win the game, which I didn't take. And in the simul games, I was unable to make any progress against him. Queen c8, another good move. So. He's not threatening anything with e5, I guess, because of knight f5. But how to improve my position here? Perhaps king h1. Do I need to make that prophylactic move, though? Why? Well, there is a reason why. e5 sacrificing a pawn, perhaps. Ah. Maybe that's the ticket here. Yes. Now this looks like an interesting idea. A strategic pawn sacrifice. He's only a minute and a half ahead on the clock. At least it's not raided. But man, I, I would definitely back this guy in a under 2000 section um, of a major tournament if, if he's really this good. Um, if his FIDE rating is 1800, I would, uh, I would definitely stake him in, in, a, in a tournament for, a, <laughs> for under 2000 prizes because he's extremely strong for his rating. Yeah, this is like 95, maybe winning for black. Close to it. <sighs> Placed extremely ridiculously well. If knight takes e5, knight takes e3, winning my queen if I recapture. So let me know if you're interested in, in backing in, in the live tournament, World Loser, because um, your play is just way beyond 1800. I'm lucky if I have a move here. And he's only used two minutes for the whole game. Rook a5 from Plucro, I have to admit I overlooked that. Um, I'm just kind of groveling for a draw here. Begging for a draw. My pawn sacrifice with e5 was, was too ambitious. But I only saw knight d5, how strong it was in this tactic with, with knight takes e3 at the last minute. I was getting in time pressure already. It's a sharp position. Um, queen c8 is a very good move. Well, probably only only move. Not that hard to find. Though maybe 
he doesn't actually have to defend because if knight takes e6 there's some tricks like knight takes e6 queen c8 knight d5 or something like that bishop takes e6 knight takes e7 check so i might have a way to defend against that rook takes f8 anybody Maybe it's worthwhile. I feel like I'm just fighting for a draw here. So I lost all my advantage. I'm down a pawn. Black played perfectly. A knight f4. Uh huh. Okay. Two minutes ahead on the clock, and you're eighteen hundred. Right. Just taking me apart. All right, I'll just resign. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing it wasn't a rated game. Okay, Sokonen, 1770. This game is just too strong, man. I don't know if you're... You're not 1800, Fide, whatever you are. You're um, you're either getting assistance or you're like a master. It's, it's, not, it's not an 1800 Fide player. Um... It's extremely strong. He played the perfect game again, so that's just absurd. I played badly with e5, but come on. Resigns, why not resigns? He's taking on c2. My whole position is just a joke. I mean, I have to resign. My whole position, I'm losing two or three pawns. Plus, I'm losing on time, too. I mean, how strong is that guy? Five games, I couldn't even get a good position against him. Except last game where he made a crazy move in a drawn position. Um, I mean, I'm not going to report him as a cheater to Lee Chess, but I can't prove that he's using a computer, but he's not an 1800 FIDE player. I mean, I don't, I don't care what you say, but the speed at which he plays and the perfect moves that he plays are just too good. He's at least 2,200 feet A. Bishop f4 is a terrible move. I can win a piece here with knight takes d4. Queen takes d4, e5. I think once in this position I did something stupid, like I played e5 and I don't win a piece because of knight takes c6. But this, this actually, this wins a piece. Take, take, e5. And if bishop e5 check, bishop d7. Um, well, 13 cent upon loss. This whole cent upon thing. I mean, I had a game yesterday with a guy in, in the five minute tournament here who was 1600. He played like Nimzovich. And uh, at the end of the game, he had four inaccuracies and. Um, four inaccuracies and. A 17 cent upon loss but I felt that he played like an I am strength positional master then he ended up playing some games right before and after where he he played like literally he was really 1600 so um, while there was like a 1% chance or 0.5% chance it was just like the game of his life um, I had decided that probably he just decided to cheat against me because he wanted to beat someone who was like a thousand points higher and he hadn't played anybody that high rated. It was a new account with like 60 games. Um, so you could certainly, probably he won't get banned from Lee Chess because it's just one game and all of his other games look pretty normal. Um, but the 
this outlying play was just like crazy good. I mean, he he offered me two draws too, like right out of the beginning of the game. So sometimes I think people are like having a friend who's like a master playing on their account for one game. Like, hey, I'm playing in IM. Why don't you come and you know play this one for me or something? You know, um, I got distracted. I didn't take my piece here. I'm too busy talking about other stuff. Okay, Salkan, you have a second chance. Um, you played really forcing moves, so it didn't require a lot of thought to defend. I mean, dude, in the speed at which he played, I'm not going to report world loser because I don't think there's enough evidence to uh, to accuse him of being a computer. But slowly, the circumstantial evidence starts getting bigger and bigger in a case like that um, over time. But the guy in the in the tournament yesterday was like, I reported him because it was just too impossible. Like. 1600s don't play like Nimzovich one game and like hang all their pieces the next, you know. I mean, this guy was clearly either switching up players or um, just using the engine to play against me that game. Um, I normally don't like to report people unless I'm certain that they're cheating. So I'll kind of let it go. In this case, maybe World Loser is just like the strongest 1800 FIDE player in the world. Um, and I'm not going to I'm not going to report him as a cheater, but I find him highly suspicious after five games <clears throat> or whatever we've played. His play is its way too consistent. There are no mistakes um, ever, except for one like when he's in time pressure or something. So it's its uh, its a judgment call, but that that's my feeling on it. Now I've screwed up my position because I got upset. Um, what is a good average stand upon for me? A 20 is good. I mean, I think anything like 20 or better is, is pretty good. Um, anything under 10 is super suspicious. And I mean, I think that smart cheaters don't play perfect moves. So you're going to get games where people are playing like making small inaccuracies. Um, just never blunders and never um, mistakes. Salkan and I, I didn't take the piece. Now you're sort of clearly better. I'm with the d5 square here. Not sort of, but definitely. Sorry, I got distracted there. You saw the game yesterday you mentioned. It was real fishy, the end game he played in such quick tempo. Oh man, this game, this is the 1600 guy. He wasn't cheating on a regular basis, but this game against me, I mean... Some people will think I'm just crying because I lost to a 1600, but the guy played like God, like strategic God, you know, and the next game he's like dropping pieces on pre's. Um, it just doesn't really make sense. So probably Lee Chess won't ban him though, because one game when he played the all, all the other games badly isn't really that, you know, strong evidence that the guy was a cheater. I would I don't blame them though. You know, I think they need they need more evidence than like one game to uh to establish that someone's a cheater or not. Anyway, back to back to the real thing here. Um world loser, I mean if you're if you're a real player, I will I will back you in a in a live tournament like the World Open or something because you're just like easily master strength. Um it took Alexander Ivanov like 60 minutes to play that well. He just like instantly knows the line and then follows up with perfect play. The weird thing about the 1600 too yesterday was that um, he offered me two draws in the middle of the game in a tense position where the material was equal. And um, I thought that was really strange. You know, you're, you're like 900 or 850 rating points lower than someone. And then to offer me a draw. And then when I declined his draw, he offered me a draw again. So it was like he was trolling me to like disturb my concentration or something. Very strange, you know. And then right after that, he played perfectly and just annihilated me. Um, I lost another game in the same tournament, but it was a completely clean game. Um, a Filipino guy who was rated like 2375, I made a tactical mistake and lost. 
I'm not crying because I lose all my games, you know, every time I lose. But when a game is suspicious and doesn't smell right to me, I mean, you know, against the Filipino guy, I had no problems. I made a terrible move. He played a tactic. I lost. That's it. You know, there's nothing to be, there's nothing to look at, you know, no problem. But when it's a guy who's 1600 dropping his pieces one game and the next game he plays like Aaron Nimzovic, I think something's up, you know, especially after this strange behavior of offering me draws. Uh, multiple times in uh, in the middle of a tense position. Um, yeah, no, it's they're unavoidable, and that's why we can never have. Um, you missed a shot there, Sakonin. Bishop takes e5, but I have a4, so I guess you didn't miss. You didn't miss it. Never mind. Lucky for me that I had that. All right, King h8. I meant to play this before, but I got distracted. Good point, check, Matab, but the question is, you know, policing it, really. He's setting up the tactics again. How to police it, because this is the future of chess. I mean, there's no going back, you know, to the way it was. There's there is no way we're going to, to, to uh, stop computer cheating altogether, so... I think that Lee Chess has done a decent job so far, but it's just such a massive problem, constantly recurring in our, in our, in our themes here, and there will be judgment calls, like in this case with World, World Loser. But you know, I've had other accounts that have done the same thing against me, playing six or seven games. Like, after a while, it's just, you know, it's it's obvious that something's going on. Um, if he was like a 2100 player I'd be like all right well maybe he's just really underrated but 1800 and he plays like a master um why is he you know I don't know man I mean I don't really want to play that player anymore you know after a while I can't prove anything but I think it's suspicious so it's also difficult to prove people are cheating or not you know it's like proving an online poker site is rigged or not, you know. How are you going to prove that? I mean, without hard and fast evidence. You get a feeling like something isn't right here, but to prove it in like a court of law, it's going to be pretty difficult. Um, I mean, just have to go with your instincts. My instincts are usually right, though. Saw Conan had a golden opportunity in this game. But he survived. He lived to fight another day. But now I have a massive initiative. Still not a winning position. The guy displays master strength, man. So, if he wants to go to a major tournament, I'll <laughs> happily back him for the entry fee. Um, I mean, if he can play better than me, then he should be like 2400 on here, not 2100. We have players like that. There are some. Um, Skiveningen, who ironically is also from Poland, is, is quite strong. Um, master strength, clearly. But he's legitimate. I mean, I've played a lot of games with him. He's talented and very strong and very underrated, but he loses and he makes mistakes sometimes. Saw Conan is, uh, is hanging on, man. I cannot find a way to win this. Trying to keep his king trapped in the center, but he's not lost yet. A3 is a good move, too. I, I think I like A3. I was, 
I was a little bit worried about that. Oh man, this is tough defense by white. Maybe I should play e4. It's kind of double-edged. I don't see how to make progress here. Simplifying, he can get down on my my seventh rank, maybe on the, on the sixth rank. Rook a6. I don't want to fix my pawn like my Magnus Carlsen against Rapport, like putting it on the wrong color. Um, one or two games left today, two games at least. I'm in Ireland. Don't think there are many FIDE tournaments here. Matt's, there must be some. I guess not too many. There's like Bunratty and um, I don't know about smaller ones. There are at least a couple bigger ones. Uh, man, where am I? What am I supposed to do here? This is very, very tough. I just don't know, man. I don't think I have anything here. Played h6. I don't know if I'm even better in this position. I didn't want to trade my bishop for his bad bishop. I'm lucky I have rook f6, the only move that doesn't lose by force. Maybe he didn't see that, I don't know, but he thought he was winning. He is worse now in the ending with these isolated pawns. Great defense, though. Bishop e8. Well, I think he's just moving back and forth. But now he's dropping a pawn. Time pressure. Still not 100% over. I think I'd prefer to lose the other pawn if I were you. Now eventually, eventually we were hoping to play e4. Maybe this is the moment. Yeah, that's a good move. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. I forgot I had rook takes g2. Oh, that's not a good move. It was tough to defend. Still hanging on, though. Very dogged. Actually, I better be careful here. Yeah, two more games, guys. Mouse slip. Okay, Salcona, nice nice defense. Bad opening though. Um You're losing a piece there with Bishop F4. King Chaser. Uh didn't play you for a long time, but I do require increment. So you have to re challenge. We'll give King Chaser time. We've got thirty minutes left. Two games. Three if one's really fast. King Chaser needs to re challenge to Something like 7-3 would be better. 8-0 I can't play. We need an increment. Um, so Ghost Mine will be next. Constant Change, I didn't play you. I'm so sorry. Did I overlook Constant Change all this time? Um, we'll play Constant Change. And um, we might have time for three games. I thought I'd already played Constant Change. Sorry, man. It got too confusing. With everything going on, um, you can even become a Fide Arena master. I can go to Fide Arena on principle. Won't uh, I? Won't support Fide. Um, although I already support them indirectly by playing. In a sense, by playing live tournaments.
they were kind of like blackmailed into supporting it. Um, wow, Ghost Mine with the theoretical opening. E5, this is a rare line, but it's actually kind of interesting. I saw, who did I see play this? Someone pretty good. French team championships. Igor Raus has played it, and then I think he lost, though, his opponent. He knew what he was doing. Um, I forget the theory now. It's been a long time. I'm supposed to play queen d5. This is like Raus's versus somebody um, in the feed. In the French, I think it's an old game I saw. Raus's versus uh, oh, one of these French GMs who's not that much a household name. LaRue or something. Rousis LaRue. LaRue won pretty convincingly with black. But this is a line. I didn't know Ghostmind was studying mainline openings, but he seems to have found something here. What isn't wrong with Fide? Can you put a headset on with a microphone? I can't hear, hear what you're saying. Your mic is bad, though. Are you serious? I don't think it's my mic that's a problem. <laughs> um, maybe your your speakers. We're getting some drop frames now. At the moment, we might have problems with the stream. Just now. What are you guys talking about? I, I thought you were talking. Um, I thought you were talking about me, but now I'm not sure. Queenie six check. Well, this looks familiar to me. Queenie six check. Queenie two. Bishop takes f three. Knight takes d five. Bishop takes d one. Knight c seven check. King moves. Bishop takes c two. Now, if I could trap his knight on a8, I would be winning. But I'm not sure if that's possible to do. Queen e6 check, queen e2, bishop takes f3. No, that's not what I was looking at, was it? Bishop takes f3, knight takes d5. Bishop takes d1, knight c7 check, king d8. Knight takes a8, bishop takes c2, and now threatening king c8, king b7. Well, it's it's interesting enough. Do you have to pay the membership to ICC to enter those tournaments? Oh, there's some, like, USCF rated tournaments. Forget about online tournaments. I mean, it seems like cheating players kind of gravitate toward the tournaments. Um, there's got to be a way, though, slowly that it can be kept under control. I won't be so bitter as to say forget about online tournaments. I'm just kind of pissed about the 1600 yesterday. He really made me mad. Um, it's so petty to like cheat with the computer online. Queen e6 check. So this looks like equal. Um, Ghostmine playing the opening correctly here. Equal game. I guess against a low rated player, I'm going to opt to keep it complicated. We could try to trade queens with queen e6 check. But. Trying to keep the queens on the board, I guess, might increase my winning chances.
so d3 We have to challenge the knight on e4. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. This is kind of weakening me along the e-file. But I think it's probably best on the circumstances. I don't want my c-pawn to fall, and uh, that means the knight has to go. Yeah, personal insults will get you banned from my room. Um, I can take jokes in a friendly way, but at least spell it correctly. Um, knight c3. Back to the center. We are dropping frames again, guys. I hope it's, I hope it's good. <laughs> the position looks really unique. Yeah, it's like an imbalance um, where both sides have these double isolated pawns. It's, it's pretty much about equal. Go for the monster knight on d5. The godfather might call this an offer you can't refuse. Fix my pawns or else. Well, he refused it. But the problem is, how quickly can I generate additional pressure? Um, it would be very obvious to play bishop d6. I think that it's too slow, and we won't be able to attack f4 fast enough. This is the problem, knight b4, and then we're on d3. So now, it's not game over, but he had to play a3 to stop that, and... Um, There, I was going to play bishop f6 to stop b4 in turn, um, but a3, bishop f6, b, uh, c4, knight e7 or something, or knight b6, I'm not sure, knight e7. Messy position. I missed that, that ghost might had this move. It's probably like my sense of danger. Knight takes d4, queen takes d4 as well. So the subconscious sense of danger goes mine drop the queen. That position, I think he played one of the best games he's played against me this game. Um, it's a good line for white. It's always given me problems. In this position, a3 and white is not really worse, I think. Um, though it's it's an interesting investigation, this whole variation. Um, D takes e5. This is a non-theoretical but interesting line. e5, knight takes e5. I think I might have seen a Dreyev game once with black. Okay, now, constant change. We lost King Chaser. Um, King Chaser was next. He rechallenged. So constant change and King Chaser. I'm going to honor both these challenges. And um, Zen Chess is 1979. You said I was master level strength during the simul. That made me feel good, though I don't know if I'm consistently that strong. Well, that's the way it works, man. I mean, some games you play master strength and some games you don't. It's like me, you know, some games I'm playing like a GM and some games I'm not. Um, if I was always playing like a GM, I would be a GM, you know? So. You have the talent to get there, and now it's just a matter of becoming more consistent. If every game you play like a master, you are a master. Or most games. As all, you don't need to play every game, but most games. I mean, even grandmasters play games like candidate masters sometimes. So constant change was waiting. And King Chaser, I'm going to go over, over the... Um, because I promised him, if he re-challenged, I would play. Let's play something I never played, the exchange variation, something different. Um, message deleted. Banned words? Non-animus? Really with the banned words? 
Very rare line. Knight c3, played by Rubenstein. Maybe um, Rubenstein. Yeah, I think it was Rubenstein who played this. So f6 right away. That looks like a good move. And then the endings after d4. We are dropping some frames. It doesn't look that big a deal. I've got to investigate what's causing this. Um, I don't really like d4, to be honest. Queen e2. This is kind of classic plan, but f6 looks like a good move. Did I have a tactic there? There's no knight takes e5, right? Um, kind of a quiet positional line for white. He has a very clear plan in mind. I never played the exchange variation, I just did this on a... Well, I have like occasionally, not recently and not seriously. Um, did this for something different. Chekmatov, it's really awkward being 1979 because I can't say I'm an expert. Forget about that, man. Who cares? Just play your best, you know? My friend Zlatko Ilicic was like 2600 and he was Yugoslav champion. And now he's like 2399. Um, but, you know, and he's not that old. He, he's like 50. I mean... It's kind of like he said to me one time, <laughs> ratings don't matter and titles don't matter. What matters is like winning tournaments. And this guy is a guy who can like win or lose like 100 rating points in a year. Maybe 92, I was thinking, A4. Don't put so much emphasis on, on like in my case, I'm trying to get the GM title it's kind of like life or death, you know? I'm getting old, it's my last chance. So the rating points and stuff, you have your whole life ahead of you. If you're young, don't concentrate on the rating too much, just try to improve and play your best. Um, and probably, it depends on the kind of person you are. I mean, some people maybe, maybe the pressure, putting your, the pressure on yourself actually helps. But in some cases, I think some people Putting pressure on themselves even hurts them. So I guess we should take in consideration your personality type, you know. Um, Queen d7. I like the way the constant change is playing this. He's got options to castle both ways. Committing a little early to the queenside castle, but I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I wish I had more familiarity with this line. I can only go by like positional, positional, um, let's say features, because I don't know theory in this line. It looks like white's passive though. Um, strat strategically, I'd like to play f4, but it's very, very difficult to get that in. Normally I have the upper hand against constant change in the opening. It's not his strong point, but this particular one, he seems to know what he's doing. Don't really like my game. Castling kingside. He could launch an attack with g5. If I play anything else, he can come through the center with like knight e7, knight d4 with advantage and more space. So it is kind of a quandary for white. I saw an Olympiad game. Somebody lost real badly in one of the early round matches. Um, 
maybe against Morozevich, I don't remember. Playing like this with white, you have to be very careful not to get blown away. With less space, no counterplay. Knight h4. Knight h4, there's no, there's no way I can play f4. All right, let's try something. I've got to play something. I'm not going to commit my king. I'm going to try to blockade the position. I'm not going to castle kingside into an attack. And I'll try to kind of blockade the queen side. Ania Sasania. Uh, Anias Asiania, um, because I can't pronounce it, I'm too tired. <laughs> I'm not saying like play f4 in this exact position necessarily, but that's the idea. If you play according to the pawn structure, the pawn structure dictates that f4 should be white's plan. Though I would prefer to be fully developed in order to undertake that. Now black played a5. I think that move is a bit inflexible, but perhaps not bad. My other knight. I need this knight to kind of protect the d4 square from future invasion. I've got to be able to control d4 one way or another. I'll do it with a bishop if I have to. Black is better here. Not just on the clock, but in terms of controlling the center, this square is nasty. Botvinnik would like black. This clamp on the center. Marazzi type of space advantage for black. Guys, I'm going to play one more game before the end of the stream against King Chaser. Gibraltar is getting interesting. There is um, quite a lot to watch there. Sacrificing a piece, anybody? I can sacrifice a piece here, but I have to probably ca choose a careful order of moves. Knight takes g5. Bishop takes c4 would take the wind out of my sails. All right. No. It doesn't look good enough. We're going to have to go into defensive mode. Or modra. If we speak in Hungarian. I don't like my game at all. This is why I don't play the exchange variation. I guess. Knight c6. He's got two different paths. Two different potential paths. Should I castle kingside finally? Looks like I'm walking into an attack over there. h4. Weakening. f3. Oh, man, I don't know. This is really tough. Knight b3 is a strange move, but I was I was running out of time. Trying to set up some kind of sacrifices, maybe, on his pawn chain um, over here. But it also allows for knight takes d4. It looks very artificial, the position of my pieces. He went that way. I don't like my position at all. Black is clearly better. 
White has no counterplay. He could have played knight g6. In that instance, I probably would have changed my mind about castling kingside. So here we have no counterplay. And I ought to rethink my whole my whole position. Maybe f3. Can lock the king side if I if I get the chance I would lock the whole board and try to draw. Just twenty five seconds left. But this player is, is pretty strong. He has given me a hard time before. But if someone has a track record against me, I know they make mistakes, they're human. Um, you know, I'm not suspicious. This guy, he can play very well sometimes, but he also plays very badly. He's a human being. Um, but other players who are suspicious because they never ever make mistakes, that's when I start to wonder about people. Um, F3 though, we walked into a bad opening. I don't know the theory and I must have done something wrong. I mean, obviously I can play D takes C6, D4. But knight C3 is a line too. I guess you're supposed to play D4 here. Um, F6 looks like a good line for black, honestly. Maybe the best. White has a horrible game. Your opponent called queenside. A big mistake. There is no mistake in this position for black. He cannot make a mistake here. I mean, he's got the whole board, king side, queen side. It's just a matter of taste. So his only mistake would be to let me lock the whole position and, and not be able to break through. I think he has a lot of ways to, to play it. Slowly improving his space advantage on both sides, a la Badvinik, would be the approach there was one moment where maybe I could have sacrificed a piece but I don't think it worked so now I don't know what I'm doing my original knight maneuver I kind of had doubts about, you know, playing knight b3. So maybe I should go back to b1 and like knight a3 or knight c3. It's not that easy for black to break through. If he plays g4, I play f4. If he plays h4, I can play h3. Plays f5, he creates a backward pawn. So he doesn't really have a pawn break. That's the problem here. How does he open the position? With no pawn break. You know, some kind of sacrifice. What I lack in dynamics, I somewhat make up for in kind of sound structure. Damn, dude. He's coming to get me. H3 is not necessarily forced. Wow. Rook f5 was another option. I think he just went into like panic mode.
Okay, so he got <laughs> he got frustrated and played g4. I don't think the piece sacrifice is really sound. I'm very, very fortunate there because I was in a terrible position. He just needs to take his time. Last game for today against King Chaser. Yeah, I can never play c3. I'm I'm utterly paralyzed there. It's it's a nightmare. It's just an absolute nightmare position. The worst the worst position you can get in the exchange variation of the Lopez. Do not do not try this at home. Um I think that Black played played well. Um he can just slowly improve his position. But maybe he didn't play the pawns as flexibly as he could have on the king's side. Maybe maybe even g5 was not optimal. I think he's still clearly better there, but d4 right away. For some reason, nobody ever plays d4 right away. Maybe I have some kind of trick. Everyone castles, and then, then I have time to play knight f6. But d4 right away. This could force me into a line I don't really like. I had um, I had this game against the Hungarian I am Zoltan Shikloshi where I, I overpressed. Um, there's no time for anything fancy like Bishop A6. It's a wonder that not more people play that move order, King Chaser, actually. Bishop takes C6, B takes C6. Okay, a lot of people castle here as well. So c3 is the first. So maybe I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I should play knight f6 first. When e5 is not so great now that he's weakened his position with c3. <sighs> okay, so it was a bad move order by me. I should play knight f6 first instead of that and I just automatically played the other move order. Now we transpose to another variation that's slightly better for white. I don't really like this. Um, although queen takes and knight takes, I'm not convinced which one is better. It's kind of like a Moscow variation. I would think that knight takes is is probably slightly more common than queen takes. Queen takes certainly fine. Why is not Caruana at the Tata? Don't know. Maybe he's not in good good relations with the sponsors. He's playing in Gibraltar, as is Nakamura. So Although I, you know, admire Van Veli, that place should be filled by a stronger player. Um, but it's all about contacts, and I think it's about sponsorship conditions. You know, how much are the organizers willing to play to pay for these players to play? You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you, you know. Um, you would think that those guys would have wanted to play there rather than this this open but they're getting good money to play in Gibraltar I assure you um, both Caruana and, and Hikaru are being well embursed for their uh, for their efforts in Gibraltar it's like you know would you rather have the day you know playing weaker players or really have to work hard. Maybe it's like a vacation, you know. Um, King Chaser getting a nice advantage here. Kind of classical for this line. 
torturous, torturous position for Black. We have beaten him four times. And I don't really like my game here. Um, maybe my last move was a mistake. It is possible to play c5. I don't really like it, but it might not be bad. One would hope I play c5 eventually anyway. Rook d1. Development. Pretty much in every line of this variation, white finds some way to force a better structure. That's what happened to me against Shikloshi. Um, I've also played some strong players on online, like Eric LeBron, I recall beating me um, in this line. That's why I gave up. Like, I would prefer um, this position, where white castles instead of d4. I play two lines, f5 and knight f6. And if castles knight f6, d4, we get into what we have here in the game. Um, but if f5, the positions are a little bit more imbalanced, and I like those better. So we are a bit ahead in development, but not for long. Rookie 8. For all newcomers, check out my YouTube channel. Thank you, Sironche. And I'd also like to remind everyone that I am available for for training. My name is William Pascal. My email for chess purposes is videochesstrainer at gmail.com. All right, man. I'm not having fun here, King Chaser. This is a really unpleasant line. But we'll do the best we can. Try to grovel a draw. This bishop is going to have to move. Maybe bishop b6 is not so stupid. He could just attack it again with knight d5. There's knight d6, though. We can't allow knight d6. So this seems almost forced. If I have to stop knight d6... It's possible to play bishop a6. Bishop a6, knight d6, rook e6 would have been an alternative. Do the bishop, the active bishops here, <laughs> notice how active this guy is, did they compensate for this pawn structure deficiency? Probably not. Classic Rosalimo. Very good position for white. But is it enough? You know, is it enough? Now white is good, no doubt. I've lost enough to Eric Lebron and Zoltan Shikloshi. These games where I didn't really have any counterplay. There was a Chinese Grandmaster playing this line for white. Now I can't remember. Wang Hao, maybe? Please forgive me if I mispronounce the Chinese names. Um, it looks like Wang Hao. I, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. Bishop C7. Is leechess.org where all the pros play? I don't think there is a set place where all the, the pros play. I think that it's very fluid and everyone has their place they play where they get used to playing. Um, Bishop e3 is a good move. I'm basically trying to draw here. We do have a strong knight. No, there's no set place the pros play. I'm sure that it's many cases, a lot of good players play on multiple sites. So, Lee Chess, I think, is, is going 
going up in terms of popularity a lot lately. So it's kind of a trendier place to play than other sites, I would say. Um, I think other sites are trending down and Lee Chess is, is trending up. I like the idea that Lee Chess is not a for-profit chess site. They don't have any ulterior motives other than just designing a really cool chess site. Um, make it the best it can be at the moment. Of course, Armageddon could ensue, but things are always changing. Bishop d4, nice move. My bishop is really sick. This pawn is a big problem on a7. But it's the question of, do I create more weaknesses if I play something like a5 or a6? Bishop on d4 is killing me. That has to go. Um, knight takes c3. Maybe bishop a6 is interesting. What about c5 sacrificing a pawn with knight f4 to follow? There's all this counterplay all the time. Just trading pieces. King Chaser has just played this well. Um, and a5, knight a4. Looks horrendous for black. This this is actually sort of threat. Just trying to hold on. Rookie six, knight f five. I should probably take the opposite colored bishops. Keep my a7 pawn protected. I'm going to hold on here, which I consider to be an accomplishment. Despite the fact that my opponent is much lower rated, my position was very, very questionable strategically. So I think well, a3, I would, I would prefer b3. Okay, a3 is it's not so bad. I think now black is okay for the first time in this game. I'm equal. Hopefully. Declining my draw, playing for a win. White's advantage is microscopic, but I, I can understand not accepting a draw. I think a lot of GMs would probably decline my draw for here. I still think black's holding on. Even if I was a pawn down, this would be difficult for white to win.
Not easy. I mean, I, I think that I'm okay here. I have to be a little bit careful, but exceedingly difficult and technical, these type of positions. Strange that he's putting his pawns on that color, though. Is he trying to trap my bishop? I guess he's just trying to win on time. Very good. Just like I am playing like over my usual We'll just move our rooks back and forth. Fifteen minutes over my usual schedule here. It's cool, but now it's interesting. And we can play for a win now. Not interesting anymore. It's a draw. <coughs> it's still a draw. But he doesn't seem interested now. Continuing. Um, strange. I mean, it looks like it's a draw. King f2, bishop takes h3, king g3. But he just times out. I don't know why you don't want to you want to play it out when you're slightly worse. Tortured me for 50 moves. Um, okay. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me here today. Um, we will be back tomorrow. No, we will be back Sunday with a 6:30 p.m. simul on Lee Chess. 20 players playing Sunday morning in the Hungarian team championship so I won't have my full strength we're gonna play 20 players and 40-40 um, time control here on Lee Chess 6 30 p.m. Central European time thank you everybody for joining me don't forget to check out the YouTube channel video chess training on YouTube you can email me at video chess trainer at gmail.com and um, again thanks for the games we will uh, again thank everyone for PayPal donations much appreciated we'll be back Sunday and thanks, Jeroen. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Bye-bye.